Doonan, who's been on the A&E front line at Whittington Hospital throughout the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, of course. Paul, thank you so much for everything that you and all the key workers across the UK have done for the next Jaguars draft pick. It's all yours. With the 106th pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Jay Tufeli, defensive tackle, USC. Let's go, JJs. Let's go. Cheers. Uh, Cheers, Jay, Jay uh, Tufele. You're, you're in the uh, National Football League. How about that? Jay Tufele, another one who did not play this last season. He was an opt-out. But you go back and watch him in 2019. He's like a bull in a china shop. He is very destructive at the line of scrimmage, winning his one-on-one -on -one battles. He plays as a three technique over a guard. You can play him over the center in a one technique. And again, everything you see from him with his hands is just very violent, a physical player. He's got knockback, which you talk about from a scouting sense. There's sometimes Charles who doesn't always find the football, but I know one thing, the guy that's lined o over him is in for a very long day with Jay Tufele. So what you're saying is he finds him. <laughs> the football is the next part of it. But here's what I think about Jay Tufele, guys. I like this pick for him for him for there's so many reasons that Daniel articulated about what Urban Meyer is looking for because he is going to get upfield and I felt like at this time at USC there were times he was off the field that I thought he should be on the field as a pass rusher I think he'll get more opportunities now to get that done Peter I would also chime in that Urban Meyer spent much of last football season on the West Coast at the Fox Sports Studios he was in Pac-12 country he knows these players Fox was broadcasting all these USC games he was doing the work so if he's taking a player out of the Pac-12, which he was talking about predominantly on those Saturdays, he knows the player and he knows what he's getting. Live from the Atlantic Health Jets Training Center, I'm Leon Washington, former Jets fourth round pick and current coach. And with the 107th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Michael Carter, running back, North Carolina. Well, there you go, Rich. We were talking about Javante Williams potentially going to the Jets. It's not Javante Williams. It's his teammate who's a very good player, Michael Carter. He's one of my highest rated players I had left on the board. You see the comparison there on the bottom with Devontae Freeman. When I watched him, I saw some Devontae Freeman. You also hear the comp of maybe a faster version of Clyde Edwards Alaire. He's patient. He'll stay behind his blocks. He's got great vision. And then you'll see the burst once he gets up into the open field. How about how loose and the change of direction you see from him here again, just stop start quickness. He's got it in a big way. Coming downhill again, foot in the ground. This is that game against Miami where they both ran wild on the Hurricanes. And you can also use him in the screen game. Get him out in the open field. And then he's gonna be tough to get on the ground once you do get him out there in the open field. So this has been a draft that is all about the quarterback and Zach Wilson. This is another example of it as we see the high fives. Holy cow. Yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> Oh my God, I am so excited. You have no idea. Rise up to my Falcons Nation, first of all. Oh my God, this is unbelievable. With the 108th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Darren Hall, defensive back, San Diego State. All right. What do you think here, DJ? Oh, you're getting somebody that's very versatile here with Darren Hall. Some people thought he might up end up being a safety. He's outstanding when he's playing it off because he's got just such a quick trigger. In other words, he's off, he sees it, he comes out of his plant and drive, and there's no wasted movement there. The other thing I really love about him as you look at his numbers here, he plays with tremendous energy and passion. And that has been something that's come up with a lot of teams when you're talking to him on the defensive side of the ball trying to find those guys that can really bring some juice this kid does that with the 2000 with the 109th pick in the nfl 2021 draft the tennessee titans select des fitzpatrick wide receiver louisville yeah you lose corey davis you want to get out and get a bigger wide receiver to put in that receiver room des fitzpatrick see the size there he even plays bigger than that he's very long he's got long arms He's a long strider, kind of builds his speed as he goes down the field. He can really high point the football. You had Tutu Atwell really going over the top, and then you saw Des Fitzpatrick, really kind of their 50-50 ball guy there for Scott Satterfield in that Louisville offense. Does a good job getting off press coverage. His hands, Charles, I thought were a little inconsistent. You see some of those special catches, then you have some drops. That was the only negative you had with him.
Well, they did need to upgrade there because A.J. Brown's going to get all the attention. All right? Everything's going to get kicked to him. Remember, in the offseason, they went out and got Josh Reynolds from the Rams, but he's never been a frontline guy. He's not been a featured guy. Des Fitzpatrick comes right in and competes to take some of that pressure off of A.J. Brown and make sure that they can continue to move the ball. It's great to be here representing my hometown, having the lovely Browns fans right in front of me. With the 110th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, Cleveland Browns select James Hudson, tackle Cincinnati. And believe in investing in the trenches. Browns fans like that one. That's always been good to them. They built, built one of the better offensive lines in football. Now you have some depth in James Hudson, who is a transfer from Michigan, former defensive lineman, who has the opportunity to play a swing tackle. He can play left tackle. He can play right tackle. He's got outstanding quickness when you see him come out of his stance. It's noticeable. You saw it in the Senior Bowl as well. He pops out of there very quick. He can generate some movement in the run game. You see him able to displace here, get that inside arm, and create some movement. He's heavy-handed at the point of attack. You see a little bit of that former defensive lineman in him to be able to torque and turn. At the Senior Bowl, I thought there was a little bit of inconsistency, but man, you can get excited just watching him move here and watch him finish at the end working against Cooper from Ohio State. Another, another time shows you that hand strength when he gets latched on to be able to control you and, and flashes a sharp punch. This is an area he's got to be a little more consistent with his hands, Charles, but this is a guy who's a tremendous athlete on a very good offensive line. Now you got some depth. And DJ, I'm glad you brought up the former defensive side of him because Peter, that plays in perfectly to what they're doing in Cleveland. When you think about that offensive line that DJ referenced, they are a punch-you-in-the-mouth offensive line. Everyone comes off of the ball and smokes you. This is exactly what they're looking for. James Hudson gives him that as a swing guy to start off with behind Jack Conklin. And, uh, you know, so they're, they're in good shape in Jedrick Wills. Pick 111, in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Cam Sample, defensive end from Tulane. Let's get it, Cam. Yeah, he was one of my top two defensive ends that were still available. And Peter was just referencing that senior bowl. It was very valuable for Cam Sample. He went down there, had a phenomenal week, not only rushing off the edge, they reduced him inside and let him rush over guards. And he really held up in there well. He's got kind of that tweener body, a 6'2 and change, 267 pounds, but he's got long arms. He plays heavy handed. And in that scheme, Charles, I thought they asked him to play a lot of run to pass. They didn't just cut him loose. I think when he gets an opportunity to get on an edge, get up field, whether it's at end or inside, I think you're going to see a little more dynamic uh, uh, version of this player. I would agree with that, absolutely. And don't forget, they got DJ Reader, Larry Uncajobi is now in the defensive tackle. But it reminds me a lot, DJ and Peter, of Sam Hubbard and Trey Hendrickson, who they picked up in, in the offseason from New Orleans. Mm. Similar body type, similar play style, more speed trying to get up to the quarterback. And he has a guy who played with him at Tulane named Patrick Johnson, mm. who we may hear his name called later in the day as well, playing on the opposite side. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One pride, baby! Yeah! Well, that was their number one need to me was finding a wide receiver. That room was barren there. They decided to go up front and get physical on the offense and defensive lines, but not a surprise to see them get to Amon Ross St. Brown, who's absolutely a perfect slot. Very physical, very tough. He does a lot of dirty work there for the Trojans. And I would also say keeping that theme alive, that's their third Pac-12 player, Brad Holmes, their general manager. He's been obviously coming from the Rams, knows those players very well. With the 113th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Derek Barnes, linebacker from Purdue. Go Lions. That's an intriguing player who made the switch from outside to playing off the ball as an inside linebacker. And somebody that has really long arms and he uses them to, to really stack blocks, meaning he shoots his hands and keeps uh, opponents off of his chest so he can get downhill and make tackles. I'd be curious to see if they are going to stack him off the ball, as you see right here, or are they going to let him rush the quarterback off the edge? You see the, the range and the speed. It's legit. He's, he's a legit 4-5 guy with his speed coming uh, both in range and off the edge here. He's a little bit tight with his hips, 
but when he gets going in a straight line, he gets there in a hurry. He's got tremendous range, plays with great effort to pursue. And here's some of the pass rush, the power, that speed to power, get a bull rush, put the tackle right on his back and finish. He's got those just strong, heavy hands. In other words, he gets his hands on you, Charles. You see bodies move. Yeah, I love when, when, when you use that term because those heavy hands are used to do what you want to do, not what the other guy wants to do. And Peter, when I look at him, off the ball in the middle. Jelani Tavai's there in the middle. He looks like your classic middle linebacker. Jalen Reeves Mabin is an outside backer now who's done most of his work on special teams. That might be where Barnes will compete first. NFL fans to Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Arthur Blank, owner of the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, on behalf of uh, all of our fans, we want to um, acknowledge and recognize the great work that our personnel department and coaching staff has done. And with another pick, number 114, in the 200, 2021 draft, we select Drew Dolman, the offensive center from Stanford University. Thank you. I thought Drew Dolman would be long gone by now coming out of Stanford. The only question really was the size, and he showed up at the pro day, and you see the weight right there, which is fine. He's got outstanding athleticism. You see him moving laterally. He plays with great awareness. And when you talk to Coach Shaw, he said this guy's ridiculously smart. He's a great leader in the locker room. Kind of has that offensive line makeup that you're looking for. Very quick hands, very quick feet. There are times where you see him struggle with power a little bit. But, Peter, when you look at the Atlanta Falcons over the last few years, even though this is a new regime, they have invested a lot of draft capital in the offensive line, a lot of first-round picks. And this, is, to me, is a second-round type player they got here in the fourth. That's a great value then. But, you know, new regime, new first-year general manager, and, of course, a new coach in Arthur Smith. Yeah, look at this NFL player comparison presented by Jeep. Let's go ahead and keep it in the family. That's his dad, Chris Dahlman. That's the player comparison. And one of the things you Woo. see, Chris Dahlman finishing, staying with it. That's what you're going to get out of his son, Drew Dahlman. This is a guy who plays with great effort. And guys, they had a big time center there who's now on the West Coast plan for San Francisco named Alex Mack. Drew Dahlman has similar traits, smarts, quickness, the ability to get upfield and get to the second level. My grandson, James Jones. With the 115th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, Dallas Cowboys select Jabril Cox, linebacker, LSU. Put him on it. So they yes. take the last, uh, the, the top player on Daniel Jeremiah's draft board, and James is going to be outstanding when he runs the entire Cowboys operation for the 2050 NFL draft. That's I think James be awesome. Jones is one for one. Uh, <laughs> it, it, He's it, nailed it. This is an outstanding value with Jabril Cox. They use him detached. This is somebody who transferred from North Dakota State, so he's not inside the box. This is from when he was back there. You saw him out over the slot. You can see him really run and chase and make plays. Again, out here on the perimeter, being able to play underneath blocks and deliver big hits. Then he makes the transfer, right? He transfers to LSU, wants to step up in competition. He not only steps on the field and makes plays, he becomes the immediate leader of that LSU defense. Talk about downhill trigger, see it, trust your eyes, and go. He can really, really run. In zone coverage, the awareness, get your hands in the, get your eyes in the backfield. He's got long arms and length, and that helps clog those lanes. And he's very fluid. This is his first game at LSU. Watch him open up his hips, not only make a play on the ball, but it's a house call. Quite an introduction to his time there in Baton Rouge. CD, this is, a, this is a steal. I don't know how much you call it. Yeah, absolutely. Look at the pieces of the puzzle because Leighton Van Der Esch and Jalen Smith, the incumbents, they added Micah Parsons in the first round, and now you add Jabril Cox. I think Dan Quinn's going to have a lot of different packages he can run. Well, select in the 116th pick, Ellison Smith, linebacker from Northern Iowa. Welcome to the family, to the New York Giants family of linebacker you. Well, there's the uh, the Northern Iowa player we were talking about, maybe going in the draft last night, and he went tonight. Yeah, and you see where he went in the fourth round. He reminded me a lot of Max Crosby when you watch him because he's so tall and long. And when, when you see the video, he just launches out of his stance. He's very springy coming off the edge. He did a nice job again. We talked about the Senior Bowl helping kids. It helped him as well. Not only had a good week of practice, but he played really well in the game. He's got that little club swim move, right? He'll slap you with one arm and then swim over the top of you with the other. He destroys tight ends. And and, and Shrakes, when you look at what they've done here, Ojolari is an edge rusher. They announced Ellerson Smith as a linebacker, but he's going to stand up and rush off the edge. 
Uh, you can see they're just trying to build on what is a very good Giants defense. He's long, he's athletic, but gosh, he is still developing a raw product. And you're right, in Patrick Graham's defense, what they're building, could put him at OLB, but he is pass rush. That is a pass rusher. That is his specialty. Long athletic player. I, I think a lot of teams thought this guy might be uh, a project. No, no, no. They'll get him going down there with the Giants. Yeah. With the 117th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Rams select Bobby Brown, nose tackle, Texas A&M. They exercised their prerogative, didn't they? Uh, you beat me to it, Charles. Oh, sorry, Rich. How sorry. dare you? My bad. That was cruel, Charles. All right. Bobby Brown to me. It's somebody you're going to be able to fill in and take over for Michael Brockers, who's going to be that big. They've always had this, ty this type of player on their defensive front. He's big. He's going to be able to hold the point of attack. You can't move him off the ball. There's times where I thought he hangs on blocks a little bit too long. I like to see him get off and make more plays. But again, it's gonna be, he's going to be firm at the line of scrimmage, and he's going to keep those linebackers clean, CD. You're not going to be able to get up to him. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. But there's also the extra element of, remember, Aaron Donald's going to eat up a lot of stuff for him, right? So that holding on to blockers for him, Shregs, that's good. But he has that ability to get upfield and have a little wiggle to himself and make a play. He might get a chance to make a few more with Aaron Donald being occupied. With the 118th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select Chris Rumpf, defensive end, Duke. This is fascinating to me because when you look at Brandon Staley's defense and you look what Leonard Floyd did last year is kind of a long, rangy, little bit skinny, had his best year of his career. I could see Rump trying to fill in in that type of role in this scheme. He's got big time juice. He's got an excellent get off. The burst he has off the line of scrimmage is outstanding. And he's just real slippery, Charles, as a rusher. He's the son of a he's son of a coach, and you can tell he's been coached up. His only thing is just getting bigger and stronger. He's going to have time to learn and grow there. Remember, Chenna Nuosu is a good player. You've also got, uh, when you look at, obviously, the man in Joey Bosa. Right. He's going to have to pick and choose his spots, but he'll get on the field in some sub situations. And, and I think that's the great spark, great starting spot for him, Peter, in these sub situations because he has to hit the weight room more. He's got to get bigger and thicker. But you can put him out there in third down and sub situations and turn him loose. That's a great option for them with the Chargers. Brandon Staley, defensive coach, gets a defensive player. Always fascinated when the first-year defensive coach gets to get a voice in this, and that's where he goes. And one of the great things I like about Brandon Staley as a defensive coach, what did he play in college, Peter? Quarterback. Like quarterback Dayton. So he's looking at things from an offensive perspective yeah. with defensive you know, mindset as well. He mashes it all together quite well. With the 119th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select... Kane Nuwangu, running back, Iowa State. Now, this is a pro day special here. He ran a 4-3-1 <laughs> in his pro day, jumped 38 inches. And that speed, when you watch him, he's 210 pounds. Keep that in mind when you see him. He's a little bit tight again. The change of direction, the, the quickness, I would say it's more speed than quickness when you watch him, CD. But, man, when he's, he presses and bounces, and he presses the whole bounces outside and gets in the open field, you're not going to catch him. And you're exactly right about a pro day testing special because during his time at Iowa State, mm -hmm. see this run here? Mm -hmm. He didn't get many opportunities to do this. This guy named Montgomery was with the Bears who was there. <laughs> Bryce Hall, it was a Brees Hall who's there to, as well. But he is a kick return guy. He is absolutely special, Peter. Punch out the film of his kick returns. And now he goes with Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison. And they've got a nice little thing there. And it's, of course, Clint Kubiak's offense. We'll see what it is. But running game, always essential. I remember Cordero Patterson was that big-time kick returner. This guy can replace him. With the 120th pick. In the 2021 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Rumandre Stevenson, running back, Oklahoma. How do you like them apples, huh? Wow, this is a big back, 231 pounds, who's really just a no-nonsense runner when you watch him. You'll, you'll see him, once he gets to contact, his feet don't go dead. In other words, you don't see his feet stop. He just accelerates through contact. He's very physical. Doesn't have that home run speed, but he can catch the ball out of the backfield. And one of the things, CD, when you watch him, and I guarantee you New England loves this about him, He's one of the better pass-protecting backs in this year's draft class, which is something New England's going to value. And not only that, with the way that they like to run the football and have a chance to 
give a little bit of help to Damian Harris, Peter. All right, this guy, thick, strong. And remember, he missed a bunch of games last year, had a suspension. So his leg's going to be a little bit fresher than other guys, but it also run with a little bit something to prove, too. Yeah, and I'm fascinated with this entire draft, obviously, for New England. We've been breaking it down for three months leading up to this, but... Now you get your quarterback of the future. Of course, we know they're going to go with a bunch of running backs. But Stevenson, of course, will be in the mix. And big schools, Alabama, Oklahoma, Belichick and those guys, they've been watching those games. Every time I eat stuffed crust from Pizza Hut, I play this song. But watch what happens when I play it backwards. Eat three toppings stuffed crust backwards. The original stuffed crust, just $11.99. No one out pizzas the hut. I used to have a landlord who thought he could fix everything. Here we go again. He could not. When you need to throw in the towel on renting, Rocket can. Rocket. You got any tape? Front end. Yes, hello, oh. I'm so... I got you. Go with us and get millions of flexible booking options. Expedia, it matters who you travel with. Why choose Invisalign over other aligners? Only Invisalign treatment uses smart track technology. It moves teeth more comfortably and predictably than ordinary aligners. So I could create custom treatment plans for every smile. Bring on spring. With calculators to help you launch your projects and delivery so the store comes to you. This is doing like never before. This is the Home Depot. How doers get more done. The Sleep Number 360 Smart Bed, on sale now. It's the most comfortable, dually adjustable, foot warming, temperature balancing, proven quality night's sleep we've ever made. Save up to $1,200 on select Sleep Number 360 Smart Beds and adjustable bases. Plus, free premium delivery ends Monday. We're here for small business every day. And to celebrate, we're doing something special. Come in for Verizon Small Business Days. Our team of trained business specialists will give you a complimentary tech evaluation to help jumpstart your communications, connectivity, and security. And we'll design a technology approach that's tailored for your business. Plus, limited time offers worth up to $1,000. Come into a participating store or book a virtual appointment to jumpstart your tech. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. All right, so here are the last five picks, including two that went down during the commercial break. We've reached a part of our draft coverage where we're, we're not taking every pick live. That's okay, though. We're going to keep you up to speed while you sit on your rump a second. <laughs> Eagles Nation, we love you. And with the 123rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Zach McPherson, defensive back, Texas Tech. Welcome to Philly, Zach. He knew the Eagles wanted to add a corner in this draft. This was my sleeper in Zach McPherson. He's the last corner I had in my top 100 that was still available. So I like the value here for the Eagles. Ran in the, in the high four fours. He jumped over 40 inches. He played outside when you watch him on tape at Texas Tech. I think his future, his best position is going to be inside as a nickel where his quickness and just how twitched up and explosive he is, I think is going to play very well in there. He's got good instincts. He's got good football awareness. He just gets a little over aggressive down the field, which led to some, some defensive pass interference penalties. But I thought the Eagles could be eyeballing some of those corners, Charles, in the first round. The way it fell, they end up getting Devontae Smith. 
And I think where you got this pick right here and Zach McPherson is a tremendous value. Yeah, he's a great, he's a terrific ball player, and I like the value and all. But let's just talk about the real stuff here. Do not schedule a turkey bowl on Thanksgiving with the McPherson family. Okay. Whatever you do, don't do it. They've got so many people in their family that are big-time football players, softball players. This whole family is athletic like you wouldn't believe. They said, hey, Mannings, we see you with all the good stuff you're doing, but we have numbers. Let's go get it. All right. I did not know. And pay attention to us now, sir. <laughs> For the thousands of attendants here in Cleveland, Ohio, and the millions watching at home, with the 124th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Washington football team selects John Bates, tight end, Boise State. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. Careful. Hey, be careful. Careful, man. sir. Careful. I love that guy. I fan of the year. He knows only one speed. Out <laughs> uh, comes the phone again. Come on, get some. Get one last selfie in. Hold on a second. The best part for me. Hit, did he just hit send on all he that? He did. He did. And Rich, and he stayed committed to the mass, too. He went full, he went full Bane <laughs> right there. Did. I like it. John Bates from Boise State. Yeah, they, the they use him, Rich, uh, flexed out, out in the slot. They'll use him also in line. They'll use him in kind of the wing off the ball. So he moves around some different spots. He's got really strong hands. He's kind of more of a one-speed route runner. You don't see a lot of burst or juice from him. But he's got a big catch radius at 6'5 and a half. He can go up and get the football. He's functional in the run game. And I thought after the catch CD, he's got a little, little make-miss to you. He's not going to wow you with his athleticism, but a little slippery with he, the ball in his hands. He was and introduced you know, by a one-speed route runner. I, think. <laughs> I like that. You fitting. know what was cool about this? is here's my comparison for him. It's a guy that in Washington, Jeremy Sprinkle, because of the ability to block, going to catch the ball a few times and get upfield and be dependable in what he does. But when this pick was made, you know what I was reminded of? Our colleague Peter Schrager already talked about the senior bowl. Mm. Senior bowl kid, got a chance to be seen a little bit more after being dinged up a little bit at Boise State. This probably propelled him towards this pick here with Washington. Twin Cities Orthopedic Performance Center. I'm general manager. Rick Spielman, and with the 125th pick in the fourth round, the Minnesota Vikings select Cameron Bynum, safety from the University of California. Cameron Bynum is a big corner, and one of the things I want to say about this kid, because when you talk to the coaches, you talk to people at Cal, before we even get into the football player, I had to, you had to get him to stop talking about how great of a kid this guy is. I mean, unbelievable character. They went on and on and just raved about what he is and incredibly intelligent as well. Uh, when he's up in press coverage, he needs to do a little bit job, a better job of throwing his hands, getting his hands on people. But he's a pretty fluid athlete. He's smooth. Uh, I liked him a little bit better in press. Again, just if he could improve with those hands. And I thought the effort was outstanding in tackling, Charles. The effort was there, but there's times where he falls off a little bit. And notice they announced him at safety, yep. which signify Anthony Harris no longer there to be there with uh, Harrison Smith. At running back, 126th overall, Chuba Hubbard. He's an interesting player. You know, he can really he can really catch the ball out of the backfield. Talk about production. It's been off the charts. Breaks a ton of tackles when you study him. You know, I've used this phrase a little bit, Charles, kind of one speed, right? Doesn't have that second gear, that big time juice. Ended up running a, a four five flat, which is a solid time. But the passing game, using him in the screen game, think about what they have there. That's something they're very comfortable doing. He'll fit right in. And many, you know, coaches covet what they see. When I say a reunion, Hubbard had 171 rush yards, two scores against Baylor in 2019. With the 127th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Kylan Granson, tight end, SMU. This is an interesting player. This is, is more of an H-back than a tight end. You see his height there. He's listed at 6'1 and a half, 241 pounds. Ended up running a 4 6 3 at his 40. He is very explosive. He's very smooth athlete. I saw a little bit of Jonu Smith, just as kind of that undersized player that can really get down the seam and make plays. He's going to be a phenomenal special teams player. When you look at his makeup of just his height, weight, speed, that to me is going to is going to put him as a very valuable player on fourth down. Uh, the only knock for me, there's drops. He has a good number of drops when you really study him, Shregs. We had the opportunity to bring him on Good Morning Football last week, and fantastic kid and a great story. Came from a community college to find himself in the SMU lo locker room, and then suddenly... Being a star on the team, I think this guy's got a great potential, and he really has a presence about him 
Don't know as much about the player as you guys, but the person, he blew us away on set. Yeah, remember, he's a transfer kid who made his bones at SMU. Reminded me a little bit, DJ, Joseph, Josiah DeGuara yeah. coming out of Cincinnati. Ability to move, move him around in formations, create matchups, and make plays downfield. Um, <laughs> as uh, the lead of the brain trust in this department for the Steelers, it's their fourth selection of the draft. They've got two fours of six and two sevens. Najee Harris, Pat Fryermuth of uh, Penn State, a tight end, and Kendrick Green, a center out of Illinois. And now we'll find out who the latest Steeler is. In honor of the five Pittsburgh Steelers entering the Hall of Fame this year, Bill Nunn, Coach Bill Cower, Donnie Schell, Alan Fanica, and Troy Palomalo, the Pittsburgh Steelers with the 128th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft Select Dan Moore, offensive tackle, Texas A&M. Yeah, and this is, again, three starters are gone from that Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line, including their left tackle. And that's what Dan Moore is. He is a left tackle. He's got a big frame, 6'5 and 5'8, 311 pounds. He's got very long arms. He was my second best tackle that was available still. I think this is good value where they're able to find him in this draft. A really thick lower half. He can anchor down against power rushers. He doesn't give any ground there. I, I thought his recoverability when he was out of position was impressive. It's a good football player in a very deep tackle draft, Charles. I think in some other years, you're talking about this player being a second round type guy. I, I absolutely agree with that. He's part of four offensive linemen, I think, here at Texas A&M this year that could easily get drafted. They call themselves the Maroon Goons because all they wanted to do was be physical up front, move people, and get things going. They actually acquitted themselves quite well against Alabama. You remember, DJ, during that game, Bama blitzed them for a while and it opened up a gap. But they played those guys. They played them very tough throughout the game. And Dan Moore, one of the true tough guys up front. Uh, the Buccaneers just traded up. Mm. What'd you make of the Kyle Trask pick, Daniel, of the Buccaneers last night? I think, you know, it's interesting because Tom still shows that he's got plenty of good football left, obviously. But when you look at their roster and you're like, OK, well, what where else do we need to go? Who's going to play? Who are we going to pick at this point in time in this draft? It's going to be able to break our lineup. So you get a quarterback that you can work with, that you can develop. Um, I, I think at some point in time, there's going to be a time when, you know, the avocado ice cream eventually has got to give way at some point in time. you got to show some age. It just hasn't happened. But to have a guy in the pipeline you can work and develop, I, it made sense to me. Or he just gets tired of it. He wants the real Spumoni, vanilla, Neapolitan. He just wants the he'll real He'll never stuff. want and, He'll and he, never he just, get there ever again. He just wants again. to kick back. But for me, watching this move, we knew they had to get someone else in there. All right? They don't really have anyone under contract. And remember how Byron Leftwich played? That long, angular body made his place from the pocket. Remember, the stereotype would be black quarterback. He's a mover. Byron was a pocket guy. So he threw it from there. Kyle Trask throws it from there. Bruce Arians has worked with pocket guys his entire career. He fits their model quite well. 174 pounds. But I love him not only over the top, but some of those pivot routes underneath with his quickness. And then you've got Robert Rochelle here going to the Rams, the corner. He was another senior bowl kid who flashes when you see him. When you watch him on the tape, he's got the traits, and that's something that they appreciate there with Les Snead and company. Uh, he can really change directions, and he can really find and play the football. Had some wow interceptions. You know who really liked Robert Rochelle? Raheem Morris really liked Robert Rochelle. And, I, and speaking with the Rams coaches, I know their board was being built, and it was, okay, well, who do you like? What do you like here? Central Arkansas hasn't been a hotbed of cornerback play. Raheem Morris was into this player, and Rochelle is one of the, the defensive coordinators pick where he really advocated for this one. He he said, oh, go ahead, no, no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, if you're a Rams fan, remember when Marcus Peters was out there on the corner and he had those calculated gambles for the football? That's how Robert Rochelle plays out on the corner as well. John. More Ravens take. Tylen Wallace, wide receiver, Oklahoma State. So there is the Baltimore Ravens pick right there. Doubling up on wide receivers, they go back and get another highly, highly productive player who plays bigger than his size. He can really go get the football. And another one, I love it when you get these type of things on these kids is they just rave about it. This, this is the type of guy you want in your building. He's got outstanding character and intangibles. And somebody, when you pop on the tape, it's just one big play after another. They chuck the ball at Oklahoma State, and he is one that can go down the field. He goes up, he'll play above the rim and make plays. He can adjust down the field as well. Thought he was a really good route runner. The only, the only question was just his pure top speed. 
But then he goes out in his pro day, Charles, and runs 4.49, so you feel a little bit more comfortable about that. But again, I can't stress it enough. What an incredible kid. Yeah, Peter, I know you had something before I pop in. Yeah, look, this is a guy who tore his ACL, so there's an injury history there, came back, obviously has a great story. His twin brother plays with him as well there, and his idol, his player that he loved growing up, Des Bryant, also Oklahoma State. So I got a chance to speak with Tylon, a wonderful per person and player. But the Ravens had Des Bryant in that building. He's not the same player, but I think it's cool to see this Oklahoma State deal and the connection that they have. Yeah, one of the coaches texted me this morning and said, when you get to Tylan Wallace, don't forget to mention how good he is at the top of routes. Yeah. When he runs his, you talk about him being an excellent route runner. At the top of routes, that's where he wins so often, and he's very, very competitive. With the 132nd pick of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Tommy Togiai, defensive tackle, the Ohio State University. Well, that got a nice special cheer right behind us when the Brown is selected from the Ohio State. That's kind of uh, covers a lot of bases here. What do you think about this young man? This was the last need that they had to me was along the defensive front, and you get a very instinctive player. We talk about guys having a GPS as a defensive lineman to be able to find the football. He can do it. See the comp down there at the bottom of Matt Ioannidis. This has been a Midwest flavor draft here for the Cleveland Browns. They've gone to Northwestern, Notre Dame, and here not traveling far to Ohio State. And then Schwartz, I don't know how Schwartz got in there from Auburn. <laughs> this is for you, Houdat Nation! With the 133rd Can't hear pick anything. in Can't the, hear the 2021 truck. NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Ian Book, quarterback, Notre Dame. Who that? Let's go. Okay, so there it is. You said Ian Book's going to go off. I was wondering if it could be to the Saints, and guess what? It is. I thought there were several teams that were targeting Ian Book here early on day three. And when you see the comparisons, when I watched him, I saw some similarities to a guy like Trace McSorley. Who I, who I like Trace McSorley, but you talk to other people and they're like, this guy might be Rich Gannon. And that's who they think of. And he's somebody that when you go through the process, you go through the interviews, the teams have been blown away by Ian Book, not only with his football intelligence, but just the kind of toughness and presence that he has when they visited with him. When you watch him as a player, he got better throughout his career. I thought he did a great job, Charles, of being able to create in the chaos. He's accurate when he's on the move, both to the left and to the right. And more than anything else, he's a crazy competitor. And that is a trait that I'm sure Sean Payton and all the other teams that were keeping an eye on him I really, really appreciate. And one thing he fits in a big way, our colleague Joel Klatt and the quarterback formula. Remember that started when we talked about Bill Parcells when uh, Mark Sanchez came out? That was a huge deal. Only 16 college starts. The Bill Parcells quarterback formula, 25 starts, captain, all these other things. Joel's talked about it throughout this draft process about the last 10 quarterbacks to win Super Bowls, how many throws they've made, etc. Ian Book fits all of that. But one thing we all have to keep in mind with early entry, all those other things, we're not going to get this quarterback formula across the board like we used to. So that's what's going to make it harder for evaluators. Kids are going to play two years in a red shirt. They're going to transfer schools. Things are going to happen. That's why it's not going to be the apples to apples. We're about at the end of that quarterback formula being that. Ian Book actually fits it. Robinson, defensive end out of Florida State, was a pick the Vikings chose from the Bills, thanks to the Stephon Diggs trade. Pittsburgh defensive end Rashad Weaver is the newest Titan. Now the Arizona Cardinals are just traded up with the Ravens, making this selection from State Farm. 120,000 vaccinations and your Arizona Cardinals. Now receiving his second shot, one of our very good Arizona Cardinals fans by the director of the Arizona Department of Health Services, Dr. Kara Chris. Dr. Chris, administer the vaccination. And now for the Arizona Cardinals pick, Dr. Chris. With the 136th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Marco Wilson, cornerback, Florida. Rise up, Red Sea, and vax up. By the way, I was looking to see if there was a draftee named Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson that could have been named right there. That would have been amazing. Uh, but it's it's Marco Wilson. Take it away. Yeah, Marco Wilson, you want to talk about a pro day. 4'3", 4'40", 43 and a half inch vertical. Woo! 
an 11-4 raw jump. So if we would have had the combine this year, that would have been one of the things we'd have been buzzing about was that performance. Now, when you put on the tape, it's a little uneven. You can see the play speed, but there's times where he just gets out of phase, meaning out of a relationship with his man, and he's got some missed tackles. So there's some things to clean up, but when you're talking about the athleticism, you can't debate it. He can absolutely go. So he's, to me, it's going to require some good coaching, and they have a good staff there with Vance Joseph and company in Arizona. Smart player, too, and that's what they value. He's got a... Rondell Moore graduated Purdue in two and a half years. And uh, Zaven Collins was a high school valedictorian. Marco Wilson, aptitude test, off the charts. Smart player with the, of course, athletic ability. Yeah, and he should be known for more than throwing the shoe against LSU. He's a good player, trained by his father, who was a college defensive back. His brother, Quincy Wilson, also in the NFL. Good bloodlines, good intellect. When, when the Browns are on the clock, this is the voice. You'll recognize it immediately. And you're probably tired of hearing my voice. With the 137th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Trey Brown, defensive back from Oklahoma. Good you, this was my highest available corner, so I, I love this pick here of Trey Brown. He's undersized at 5'9 and change, but what he is is he is competitive and feisty. You see the production there on the bottom of the screen with the four interceptions. Incredibly quick. When he's in off coverage, I think his eyes really work. He sees it. He can plant and drive on the football. It's interesting the combination of the players we've seen go in this draft. The one rough game for him, Charles, was going up against Tylen Wallace. Yeah. When they went up against their rival in Oklahoma State, he got the best of him. But I love the competes, the competitiveness of this kid. Say that word again, DJ. The competes? Yep, and the competitiveness. Well, why, why is that important? Always compete. Seattle, Seattle took him. I mean, that's what they want. Remember, they got to kill a Weatherspoon from San Francisco who had a share of troubles there. He's got to come in and compete now. And they're not telling him, hey, you're coming in and getting this spot. Shaquille Griffin gone. You got to come in and play it. Come in and play. Trey Brown's going to come in and push that opportunity. Live from the Ford Center, this is Mike McCarthy with the 138th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. The Dallas Cowboys select Josh Ball, offensive tackle, Marshall University. There you go. Interesting case here with Josh Ball because he was at Florida State, had some issues there, ended up going to Marshall. And when you watch the tape on him, he is a left tackle. You see the size of dimension. He's got 35-inch arms, incredibly long. And in my notes, I wrote down, Charles, this is a juicy athlete. I mean, you can see it. He can really move and, and change directions. He comes out of his stance for a big guy. He can bend and redirect. Um, to me, he's he's got some plays, too, where you'll see him finish. Why do we have to show the App State highlights? We don't need to do that. <laughs> but he can finish guys. Feel you'll see pain, him finish DJ. guys into the bench, uh, driving them off the field. So there's some concentration lapses where you'll see, okay, man, what just happened on this play? But, but man, the flashes are so good and so dominant. He's got a chance to be a starting left tackle in the NFL. Well, the thing concludes. The everything being this draft, we've got... Jacob Harris of UCF, the wide receiver, just joined the Los Angeles Rams. Buddy Johnson continuing the run on Aggies for the Steelers. And the Bengals are all in on Deontay. Don Deontay Smith, the tackle of East Carolina Packer. Steelers have a new buddy. And that's two straight Texas A&M. That's two straight Texas A&M players being taken by the Steelers. They took uh, earlier in this round Dan Moore, a tackle out of Texas A&M. The new man on the offensive line for Green Bay is Royce Newman. So hey, uh, Aaron, while you're enjoying the, the Derby, how about two linemen and an actual wide receiver named A. Rogers for you? Just, just thinking of you while you're hanging out there with your mid juleps and all. So uh, which one of these jumps out at you, Daniel? For me, it's Jacob Harris, because I think he's one of, if not the best special teams players in the entire draft. He's got the size, 6'5", 219 pounds as a wide receiver. Some teams view him converting as a tight end. He ran 4'4", flat. He vertical 40 and a half inches. He broad jumped over 11 feet. So he's a crazy, crazy athlete. And I think, look, I'm not comparing him to DK Metcalf. When you look inside that division, they get to see DK Metcalf and his size speed combination. They don't have a guy with that with that skill set on, on their offense. But guys, I think to me is is impact is going to be felt immediately on special teams. You try and find a role for him eventually on offense. Yeah, the one I looked at was Buddy Johnson, the linebacker from Texas A&M. Peter talked about the relationship that Jimbo Fisher has with the NFL now. The Steelers are built on toughness. 
So to go there and get two guys from Texas A&M, the offensive tackle, and come back and get the linebacker, the, the philosophy fit perfectly. Raiders went ahead and uh, made a selection. Tyree Gillespie, the safety out of Missouri, is who the Raiders went up and took. And we're about to hear what the Chiefs are going to do to wrap up round number four. And Gillespie's very athletic, explosive. Made some big-time plays in the Alabama game when you study him uh, in that one. He's an excellent blitzer. Um, made some plays against Florida and Kyle Pitts in, in that game as well. So played big-time competition. The only knock was he'll have some fly-by missed tackles. But, man, he's a 4-4 kid who plays really, really hard. If I'm not mistaken, they've now traded up for two safeties in this draft. I mean, very curious decisions here where it's we want these specific players. Morig, they traded up to get, and I believe this safety they traded up. So Raiders uh, trading up to get safeties, that must be a position of need. It is a position of need, Peter, because Eric Harris, who started there last year, gone. Jeff Heath, it was around. But the big thing is Jonathan Abram and coverage ability. Yeah. That has been lacking for them in a big way. He's a big boom guy, but the coverage has been spotty. So being able to get guys who can catch cover. And Merrick, the best flat-footed cover guy you can get is a safety. All right, Chiefs Kingdom. With the 144th pick of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Josh Kando, defensive end, Florida State. Yeah, Josh Kando is an edge rusher. He's got a, he's got the body type that you want. You see the dimensions there on the screen. He's he's what you want getting off the bus. He's got very long arms, 34 and a half inches. He's a little bit tight, not great in change of direction, but he plays really, really hard and has a lot of late wins as a pass rusher, meaning the effort gets him home. So you've got the body type, you've got the effort, and he's going to have a lot of opportunities to get in that, in that role uh, to rotate through in that front. I remember Janarius Robinson, his running mate at Florida State, already went in the draft a few picks earlier, both similarly constructed in terms of body. And when I look at him, you know what I'm thinking with that team he's going to in Kansas City? Frank Clark. Not as fast, right? Not the same twitch and, and bend and movement that you'll get out of Frank Clark who gets upfield fast with a body type similar.